All right. We're on. Hey, Paul Sponsia, the CEO of the IT company, doing another one of these virtual meetings with uh, Microsoft Teams. Now I have the cool background. You don't see my actual uh, my actual house. Uh, I'm outdoors, actually, with my laptop sitting on top of my truck because my my daughter is inside on a Zoom meeting for her school, and our desks are right next to each other, so we thought we wouldn't interfere. And then I have two young babies who are making a lot of noise upstairs, so... So I've got my uh, my friend and uh, actually my brother-in-law, Derek Stevenson, on the on the line on the on the virtual line here, and uh, so I'm gonna let you introduce yourself, Derek, and then I'll tell people why in the world am I talking to you other than just wanting to catch up with my my brother-in-law. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, speaking of backgrounds, I'm I'm here on the uh, the 12th floor in, in in midtown manhattan at least that's what it looks like uh, actually no i'm, I'm in uh, columbus ohio and uh you know i appreciate you having me obviously you know derek stevenson's my name uh i, I work for logarithm in the cybersecurity space it's a company headquartered out of boulder and uh this is uh really my 12th or 13th year of sales management or sales leadership. So been with Logarithm going on five years. I've managed small, medium enterprise teams and large enterprise teams and uh, responsible for all sales in the, the Southeast region. So a cool. little bit about uh, where I am and the roles I've had and and a little bit about my tenure in sales leadership. Cool. So our our topic was uh, is kind of a leadership topic. I wanted to pull Derek in. Derek is uh, I don't he will um, defer a lot of what I'm going to say or or deflect a lot of what I'm going to say. But I think Derek is a great leader. He is a former, which I think one of the things that's kind of neat, former uh, Division One collegiate soccer player. So there's a lot of leadership when you play athletics. And uh, I've known Derek for a while now and realized what a great leader he is. And as I, we worked on topics as a company around um, virtual workforce, it really, one of the things I really want to talk to people about is leading a virtual workforce. And so that's really why I pulled Derek in because he's got a team, I guess, how many states is your team distributed through? So, so today uh, in current role, it's 10 states. Essentially, it's uh, the traditional southern or the traditional southeast uh, seven states, and then also a little bit of the mid Atlantic through Maryland, DC, and Virginia. Okay, cool. And how, is that 10 people, or is that just how many people does that account so, for? So that's eight sales professionals, and then we also have four sales engineers that report to my counterpart regionally. Uh, okay. okay. So two things I do want to kind of at a macro level talk about because we'll break this up into multiple videos. One is I do want to focus on the stuff we talked about leading, but I do as a kind of a last thing, it'd be cool to talk about selling in this market too. If you could take, if we could talk about that for like 10 minutes at the end, I think that'd be really helpful sure. for a lot of people. So um, I, my first question really is you've been doing this, I think you said 13 years in a leadership position. Obviously before that you were just in direct sales. And I would think how much of it is, has been in a virtual, you know, some type of virtual work environment. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So I essentially, I started leading sales teams virtually about five to six years ago. Yeah. Uh, and I've, I've had, I've had the distinct pleasure of leading three different sales teams, essentially everything east of the Mississippi. So, geographically uh, a large area uh, and uh, generally smaller teams frontline management so essentially six to, to ten sales professionals that are distributed across many states was there anyone like as you got into that role was there anyone or any one thing that really you um maybe a person that really helped you understand how to do it was there anything that they and then was there anything specific that they really said derek to get this right, you got to do this, this, or this. You know, a cent the quick answer specific to a distributed or a virtual sales leadership role, not really. Although I, I think of, I think a lot of the same principles in terms of sales leadership face to face or in closer proximity translate uh, equally to it to a virtual environment or to a distributed environment. 
So I never really had specific mentorship, but throughout my career, no doubt, I've had tremendous sales leadership that, number one, have taught me the difference between sales management and sales leadership, Mm -hmm. uh, but, but also have walked me through defining what a sales leader is. And, and again, I think a lot of those same principles cross over to a, a virtual distributed kind of sales leadership role. So nothing specific in terms of mentorship around this topic, but again, a lot of it's somewhat, at least what I what I think is somewhat the same. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Like, what do you think is key and different? Like you have to lead people, but you're having to lead them when you're not with them. You know, and I think that's a fear a lot of people have, especially in the probably the more small business community who typically aren't in distributed environments is like, well, how would I, how am I going to lead, motivate, hire? Like, how does all this work when I don't, they're not in my, like, I don't see them. I don't, we're not sitting in an office together. I can just walk over and say, hey, let's talk about this. Yes. So, so I think as a sales leader, I look at it kind of in two different ways. The first thing is how am I going to run the business? which essentially is how do I operate? What's my cadence on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, uh, quarterly uh, time frame? And you know, what are the things I'm managing? What are the things I'm inspecting? What am I doing to drive my business to get to a positive business outcome, which generally in sales is your quota, overachievement, whatever it may be. And then the second piece is how do I lead in an environment like this? Because I think they're distinctly different. Uh, sales leadership to me is solely number one, you need followship. And then number two, I think a sales leader's number one role or, or a couple different things, but primarily is to influence and to develop. So the question is, how do you do both in a virtual environment? Because I think uh, I don't want to say they're equally important, but both are necessary for you to be successful virtually and in, 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 in the distributed environment. So I, I guess taking a, le- a level deeper, um, obviously from, from running the business, uh, everything's about cadence virtually. Everything oh. needs to be calendarized. There needs to be clear expectations on what you're measuring and, and the things you want to cover in each meeting. Um, I think as a, a sales leader, you know, essentially, you know, the way I focus is, is, is what's my weekly, what's my monthly, and what's my quarterly cadence. And then everybody kind of fits into to what that cadence is and that helps me run the business Mm. and then i you know i think as a sales leader when we go back to influence i mean that's 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 our number one that's the one thing we can do to help impact our people in a positive way which is really our number one goal is we want our sales professionals to to be successful to provide high levels of income or the right levels of income for their family. And it's our job as sales leaders to develop and ultimately influence. And I think in a virtual environment, it's much, it's much difficult. It's much more difficult to influence your people because, you know, in your traditional brick and mortar, you've got the cooler talk, you've got, mm-hmm. you know, you, you know, come sit down in your face to face. So it's a different interaction. It can be yeah. more personal. So I think as you influence in, in, in a virtual environment, number one, I think in, in any type of sales leadership, it starts, uh, and, and obviously we could spend hours on discussing how we build trust with our sales teams, but it starts with trust. Without trust, you can't influence. So you know, I think it's important, number one, that you've got a good baseline of trust, and to build trust virtually sometimes can be, can be challenging, but I think there's some core principles to build trust. And I, n- number one, you've got to build a safe space where people feel like they can collaborate, be honest with you mm-hmm. uh, remotely or virtually. Um, number two, I think if you say you're going to do something, you have to do it. Uh, and, uh, and, I, and I think that's a second principle in terms of, of how to build trust, but essentially, and then, and then third, relationships are critical virtually. You, a good sales leader or an effective sales leader has the ability to 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 build strong relationships virtually, but also maintain. Mm-hmm. And that's also done through good communication. Then also uh, being cognizant that uh, even though we're in a virtual world, that we're still talking to people. Yeah. And there's a personal aspect to every single communication that we should be having with our people to continue to build trust. And then through trust, ultimately, we can influence. So so I think it's both. It's it's number one, how do we run the business? How do we operationalize it to make sure we're inspecting and driving the things that get us good business outcomes? Second, how do we lead our people through creating safe spaces, a trusting environment, 
keeping it personal so that we can influence and help them ultimately get to their goals. So I think I think it's two tracks, and that's where our focuses need to be when we're working in this type of environment. That's good, and and I mean I know I know this about you. You're not just you know virtually uh, up until you know six weeks ago you were getting. I mean and I think this is key in a virtual environment is you start to figure out how to get in to the face-to-face, side-by-side uh, environments. You can't just, just be like, oh, we're always going to do video and phone calls and just, you know, I'll, I'll drive you that way. I mean, you've got to and influence you and get to know you. you got to, I think, I feel like I'm, I'm yes. uh, projecting what I think you might say, but what, I think that's important. Yeah, so that's a great point, Paul. And if you think about it, you're right. Prior to, you know, the current uh, COVID pandemic, if you go back to as a sales leader, how I operate from a cadence perspective, I was very focused and, and I'll, we'll get back to that, but I was very focused to not leading behind the desk. Mm-hmm. And uh, part of my cadence on a, on a monthly basis is I'd be in the field at least three times a, three times a month, at least two okay. to three times a week. Uh, I, I don't think I think good sales leaders re- lead from the front, not from behind. I think they set the right example. Uh, and then back to the influence part, what a great time to help develop your people uh, when you're doing it with them. Um, a lot of times people learn through osmosis. If I see you do it, I can do it. And I can yeah. do better because I've seen you do it. And then back to the relationship piece, if you're in the field with your people, you're building trust and you're building credibility, which mm-hmm. then allows to influence. And if you can influence in a positive way, then the outcome for your sales professional will only be positive. Yeah. So, so absolutely. I mean, I, to me, um, to me, I think, uh, I prefer, I prefer to be in the field, not behind the desk for those specific mm-hmm. reasons. And then, you know, ultimately if, if I'm doing, if I'm leading the right way, I'm energizing my teams, I'm gaining commitment around the initiatives that, that as a team, we feel like are important. Uh, in addition to that, I'm building trust and relationship. And then ultimately, again, back to my original point, now I'm able to influence. And if I can influence, because I can't do, I can't do, mm-hmm. uh, I can't do my sales professional's job, nor do I want to. Quite frankly, a lot of them are much more talented sales professionals than I could ever be, mm-hmm. which talks to culture, which is another point. But but essentially, it's it's just all influence, and, and especially when you're leading from from the front engaged in the trenches you gain credibility respect trust again which which helps helps influence yeah what um you we, you talked about culture and you work for a company that has their own culture but i think culture is super super hard to impart culture you know if you have an organization of a thousand people with you know people distributed all over the united states it's really difficult to fully push culture out so you have to hope that the people that work for you are taking the culture out into the field so are there things that you've done Derek that you know where you're really focusing on culture like like specifics like the things that you've done to try to drive culture inside your team yeah so first off you know the company I work for Logarithm has got a tremendous culture in fact that is one of the reasons why I joined the, the organization and why I'm still here and I you know, one of my old bosses, Tom Hervey, who I used to work for, always just say, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Culture mm-hmm. is what people do when you're not looking. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think culture for me is everything. And uh, I'm big with my team about protecting our culture. But a culture is built by the team, not by the sales leader. You mm-hmm. can't push your culture onto your team. Culture is created or agreed upon with your team. And those could be through, you know, it could be through, uh, you know, we're, we're collaborative or it could be through uh, mentorship programs or people just assuming mentorship of other sales professionals on the team. It could be how we talk. It could be, you know, um, uh, how we share ideas, et cetera. To me, that's culture. Uh, so, so for me in, in, in my current job, and what I try to do always is, is, number one, without getting too specific on what our specific culture is on my team, but again, I, I think the core principles are the team builds the culture, not the sales leader. Mm. And, uh, and I think it, it's, it's, it, it sometimes takes time, but, but culture 
to me is so critical because it does eat strategy for breakfast. And again, people do culture, people are culture. Um, and uh, culture, culture is something that you have to protect because it determines attitudes, work ethics, focus, how we operate, et cetera. So uh, to me, culture is critical, almost more important than strategy, no doubt. And, uh, and, and I think it's something collectively built by the team. And sometimes it takes time to build a strong culture. Oh, yeah. You know, I want to go back to what you said earlier, too, because I think part of uh, I do. I, t- I kind of agree and disagree a little bit. I think one of the challenges with culture is, you know, somebody has to determine how the culture is going to be built and then protect that and bring the right people in that kind of um, help to build and grow that culture. Because you can bring somebody in that's, opposite of the culture you have and they can wreck it you know and, and so that can be a challenge so it's a little bit of both but i think one of the things in culture you alluded to probably a little more tactical but cadence can you tell uh, do you mind to share a little bit about your cadence that you feel like helps kind of keep um a uh, people connected yeah. in, in this in this environment yeah, so it's interesting. So these are, it's, a lot of them are kind of simple. Uh, you know, for example, I, you know, with 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 on my team specifically, I think one of the core pillars or a couple of the core pillars of our culture. Number one is collaboration, sharing of ideas. Uh, I think those are two two key areas that drive a couple different components of of our culture on my team. And you know, essentially, you know, I. I think number one, if, if 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 there needs to be ways to communicate when it comes to collaboration and sharing ideas, there needs to be a forum. Mm-hmm. So you know, essentially through team meetings, um, you know, if we're tackling an idea as a team, how do we collaborate and share ideas? Uh, maybe it's a team member coming to that call and and sharing ideas, and the team collaborates on on best ways to move forward or. Or uh, maybe it's a it's as simple as a an ongoing text chain with your team. How we stay connected, mm-hmm. how we share ideas that way, and collaborate best practices, and 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 stay close that way. Um, you know, we just did our we do a, a, a QBR, and um, every quarter quarterly business review. Generally, we do that in person, yeah. uh, and and that's one thing in my region culturally that we that is mandatory that we do do them in person or maybe some other regions do them virtually because I think that's how you maintain culture specifically yeah. on a quarterly basis. That's how relationships stay strong. That's how we debate. That's how we collaborate. That's how we share share ideas real uh, you know in person real time. Um, now this this time is a little different uh, because we did it virtually, hmm. uh, which which isn't my preference. Uh, but 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 I think it was it was it was decently successful and, and I think. Uh, reinforcement of culture could be, you know, in terms of, of of me reinforcing back the team that this is what is important to us as a reminder. This mm. is our mindset. These are the things that we protect as a team when it comes to culture and reinforce them that way. So did there's you guys use video ways to do it. What's that? Did you, guys, did you guys do it over video? We did. We did yeah. it through huh. team. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, which was which was unique unique for us, and, and quite frankly, you know, you talk culture. That is one part of our culture that we all determined we wanted to honor, and those were in-person QBRs. Mm-hmm. And generally, you'll find a lot of sales professionals might not prefer QBRs, uh, but but part of our culture is in person. And then there are certain activities we do during our QBR that that are collaborative and how we share ideas and how mm. we debate where everybody gets a voice the idea wins the room not the person with the power and that's, that's culture right yeah, so th- th- there's some things we do absolutely yeah the idea wins the room not the person with the power that's a big one that's a i've heard that said a lot of different ways it's the only time yeah. i've heard it said that way but that's that's super important i think to culture and also um to trust and to um and i think in a virtual world where I think trust might be a little harder to build yeah. you know, because you're, you're not with somebody all the time. Um, so that, that's, that's super important. Well, so the past six weeks, you've had no choice but to do it this way. So you would normally be in the field. So if six weeks, that would meant that you would have probably have been eight to 12 touches with your team in the field, different people. That didn't happen. So have you, how have you had to adjust? What has been a little different with this 
particular situation? So, yeah, I mean, you know, the obvious is everything is now remote via mm. Teams, WebEx, which is a little bit of a challenge. I prefer, and my team prefers selling face-to-face. I still think sales is very emotional. And I think um, uh, the most productive, effective uh, way to sell is, is face-to-face. So it's been mm. a little bit of a change for us. Um, I, my cadence has still been the same in terms of how I drive the business from an operational standpoint, monthly, outside of me being in the field. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I'm, I'm lucky because I've had a, I've had a team that's, that's basically been intact for a couple of years now. We've added a couple headcount, which is interestingly enough, where, where I haven't been able to build relations in the field, but being remote, you know, I, I still think that, I still think you can hit on the trust, the relationship component remotely, which has been a little bit of a challenge, but that's just constant contact. Um, I think taking it personal in a lot of your communication to understand the person, even though you're not face to face. And then additionally, I think more contact. Uh, so essentially, you, you know, I think when you're in the field and you're with somebody for three days, yeah. you, know, you don't, don't necessarily, you might not talk to them on that Friday, that Monday or Tuesday. I think when you're remote, every conversation counts and that might be 20 minutes. Yeah. I think staying engaged, staying in contact, mm. communicating, developing, influencing. It's, yeah, it's absolutely different now than it was before, but but constant communication with my newer guys, uh, you know, daily, every other day, uh, yeah. to making sure that um, that we are doing the things necessary to, to run the business and then also for mm. me to have influence. You know, it's been interesting as I've talked to people and you just continue to reinforce it is really leading is not any different in the setting from a, um, a strategic perspective. Like you should do all the same activities you've always done. You just have to leverage the technology that you have and be a little bit more intentional because you can't have the two or three days in the field where you go to dinner and you have breakfast and you're riding in the car and you're doing all these other things. Those things don't exist anymore. So it seems like if I could sum it all up, it's like, if you're already a good leader, just keep doing the things you're doing. You just need to be a little bit more intentional and you're going to have to use the tools um, to connect a little bit more than you would have done in the past. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Uh, You know, we're, we're leveraging WebEx and teams more than ever. And you've seen some creativity in terms of how to uh, how to stay connected, the virtual happy hours, et cetera, which might yeah. be in place of the dinners. Yeah. Um, Have you guys done anything like that together? We, yeah, we, we did one virtual virtual happy hour uh, where we introduced a new team member. It was it was it was good. It was, I was it, you know, and this was early on. Uh, but quite frankly, we're we're already used to operating in. Right. In an environment where the virtual happy hour, to me, is actually the is actually is um, is the exception to what we're doing. Meaning that's something we would never do because nothing much has changed for us. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, but no doubt the the tools, you know, WebEx, Teams, etc., to stay engaged. I, you know, I think I think as sales professionals, being that we're not face to face when we're selling or when I'm talking to my people again, you know. It, it's easy to get you know right into to a meeting and focus to the to the agenda or the task at hand, uh, but I think we need to make time for that personal engagement, communication, et cetera, up front. Yeah. Well, switching gears just a little bit to um, I think a, a big question that I know you know I have two sales people and a and a marketing person, and we've had this conversation a lot. Like, well. A, do you stop selling? B, how do you keep selling but be sensitive to the fact of everything going on? Um, you know, what about your quotas and all the things that you're responsible for? So sh- shifting gears slightly as, you know, what have you or what is your kind of mindset around? Are you just like, no, hey, it's, it's business as usual. Like, what would you tell people, you know, who are who are leading a sales team or in a sales role right now? Like, what's what's yeah. the what do you do? So I think it's two things. Number one, you know, being a sales leader, you, you kind of have different constituents or not constituents, but you, you have different groups you communi- communicate to and with. So for me, with with 
you know, for me, it's customers, prospects, partners, and then also my sales team. So I think with my sales team in times like this, the first thing you have to be uh, is is genuine with your people. I, I don't think the right way to approach this is to act like it's not there mm. uh, and to act like it's not a challenge. I think as sales leaders, being genuine, honest, transparent, maybe a little vulnerable is important, again, to gain trust and to influence. Yeah. So for me, the first thing with my salespeople is I admit and I acknowledge that uh, th these are unique times. So I think that's mm. number one. Um, so then it's, so then it's, okay, well, well, if that's what it is, then how do we message and communicate with our customers? And, you know, that's been, that's been unique. You know, the whole quarantine hit with two, two weeks left in our quarter, which is where we do generally 70% of our business, which was a very odd time. And it was, and it was, it was so unique to us and how we communicate, especially with two weeks left, everybody, you know, cause salespeople have quotas too. I mean, salespeople yeah. need to hit their quotas to make money for their yeah. family. So it's balanced. So that, that was tough. So as we shifted out of the quarter into the new quarter, you know, I, I think you need to message these things correctly. Number one, when you reach out to customer prospects, I think you've got to acknowledge that this is real, the same way I do with my sales professionals. And then I think the best way to, the, the best way to make a difference with customers and prospects is it to make it about them and how we can specifically help them in times like this, because unfortunately through crisis, there is opportunity. And specifically yeah. in, the, in the cyber security space, mm -hmm. there is opportunity. So, so number one, let's acknowledge it, let's message it the right way, let's be empathetic, and let's find ways to communicate with our customers and prospects where we're helping them do their job, which ultimately could turn into an opportunity where everybody wins. Yeah. Have you seen anybody be like, hey, I don't, this is, don't call me. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. have time for, or has it been, have people been mostly like, hey, I get it. Yeah, this is just this is the job you got to do. So I understand. Yeah, uh, good question. So initially when COVID hit, it was more of, you know, everybody was spinning up their business continuity plans. Hey, this is now on the back burner. Hey, yeah. uh, this isn't of interest right now. I've got to stand up 300 remote workers. Mm -hmm. So, so you've got to be, you got to be empathetic to that. So, so yes, in the beginning it was, Hey, kind of leave me alone. But now I think we're getting past the point or we're getting to the point where people that are in their jobs are in their jobs. And just like I need to operate, they do too. Yeah. And a lot of times the way they operate are, you know, project focused, evaluating mm -hmm. technologies, making mm -hmm. decisions. So now I think as we move forward, people are communicating more. Now, that doesn't mean that purse strings are open, yeah. but I think it's very important the next 30, 60, 90 days that we have as many productive conversations as we can so that we're positioned for when purse strings do open up. Yeah. And then ultimately in parallel with that, we need to be making sure we're in front of our customers, making sure they're successful, mm -hmm. those touches. And that doesn't even necessarily mean selling them anything. Mm -hmm. uh, what that really means is making sure that the solution they have in, in, in our product or and or services is effective and helping them do their job. So I think yeah. that goes a long way as well. So uh, that's good. That's well, really two different two different times yeah. uh, three weeks ago to now. I think you're right. I mean, I think it's a challenge for uh, at first, you know, every, like you said, everybody was a unsure, confused, not sure what to do. And there was a lot of uh, I think the the whole rollout of sort of the quarantine and what are we going to do Do we have stay at home orders made it even more challenging and difficult. And, uh, and now that everybody's sort of worked into a routine, it seems like people are at least, you know, having conversations. And, uh, and I think that's the thing I was thinking about with salespeople is making sure that a, they're sensitive to the fact that the world is different, um, right now. And it may be different, you know, for the foreseeable future, but also realizing that they have a job to do and this is how they feed their families and, you know, provide for the business and for them personally, I'm making sure that they're still intentional to go out and try to drive um, build relationships, drive sales, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, I, I, I think it's yes. So salespeople are coin operated uh, and when they put coins in the machine, they get paid or the machine. <laughs> work, right? So yeah. I, I just think in different times, we need to do things differently as well. And I think there's, even though this this is absolutely, a, a, you know, a tremendous challenge, and hopefully it clears up pretty soon. I, I think I think instead of 
pushing back against it, being abrasive, unempathetic. I think we need to we need to be the opposite, and we yeah. need we need to embrace it, uh, and we need to be empathetic. And then we also need to find ways creatively to add value in times like this. Mm. Um, and and I think if you can do those things in a genuine way, you'll get further quicker. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I don't have any more questions. Do you have any any last thoughts or anything you would want to impart wisdom? Uh, no, I think this was a great conversation. I appreciate you having me. And um, no, this was uh, de- definitely a a, uh, a valid topic in these times. And yeah. and uh, hopefully through our conversation, somebody else gets some value through this. Absolutely. And, um, and I'm sure I'll I'll see you next time. Yeah, well, I'm going to stop recording, but hang on. We'll chat for a second.